Hello and welcome to Microbial Insider. If you are new to this channel, I do videos about disease caused by microorganisms and microbiology lectures in general. Before I ride on, please do endeavor to hit the subscribe button and turn on your notification so whenever I upload a new video, you won't miss out. So, antimicrobial drugs act in one of several ways by inhibition of cell wall synthesis, inhibition of cell membrane function, inhibition of protein synthesis, inhibition of nucleic acid synthesis, and the inhibition of metabolic pathways. Inhibition of cell wall synthesis Bacteria have a rigid outer layer, the cell wall, which maintains the shape and size of the microorganism and has a high internal osmotic pressure. Injury to the cell wall or inhibition of its formation may lead to the formation of spherical bacterial protoplasts from gram-positive organisms or spheroblasts from gram-negative organisms. These forms are limited by their fragile cytoplasmic membrane. If such protoplasts or spheroplasts are placed in an environment of ordinary toxicity, they take up fluid rapidly, swell and may explode. All beta-lactam drugs are selective inhibitors of bacterial cell wall synthesis and therefore active against grain bacteria. The initial step in drug action consists of binding of the drug to cell receptors, which are the penicillin binding proteins. There are three to six penicillin binding proteins, each with a different affinity for the drug and may mediate a different effect. Penicillin binding proteins are under chromosomal control and mutations may alter their number or their affinity for beta-lactam drugs. The remarkable lack of toxicity of beta-lactam drugs to mammalian cells is due to the fact that mammalian cells don't have the bacterial type cell wall with its peptidoglycan. The difference in susceptibility of gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria to various penicillins or cephalosporins probably depends on structural differences in their cell walls, such as the amount of peptidoglycan and presence of receptor, that determine penetration, binding and activity of drugs. Examples of drugs acting by inhibition of cell wall synthesis are penicillins, cephalosporins, vancomycin and cycloserine. Inhibition of cell membrane function The cell membrane of all living cells serve as a selective permeable barrier, carries out active transport function and thus control the internal composition of the cell. If the integrity of the membrane is disrupted, Macromolecules and ions escape from the cell and cell damage or death occurs. The cytoplasmic membrane of bacteria and fungi has a structure different from that of animal cells and can be more readily disrupted by certain agents. Consequently, selective chemotherapy is possible. Drugs that inhibit cell membrane function include polymyxine, cholestine, imidazoles, and triazoles. Inhibition of protein synthesis Bacterial cells have the 70S ribosomes, which compose of the 30S and 50S ribosomal subunits, whereas mammalian cells have the 80S ribosomes which consists of the 40S and 60S ribosomal subunits. The subunits of each type of ribosome, their chemical composition, and their functional specificities are sufficiently different to explain why antimicrobial drugs can inhibit protein synthesis in bacterial ribosomes without having a major effect on mammalian ribosomes. The major classes of antibiotics 
that inhibit protein synthesis are 1. Aminoglycosides They irreversibly bind to the 30S ribosomal subunit, causing it to distort and malfunction. This blocks the initiation of translation and causes misreading of messenger RNA. Examples of aminoglycosides are streptomycin, gentamicin, and amikacin. Secondly, we have the tetracyclines. They reversibly bind to the 30S ribosomal subunit, blocking the attachment of transfer RNA to the ribosome and preventing the continuation of protein synthesis. Macrolides they bind reversibly to the 50S ribosomal subunit and prevent the continuation of protein synthesis. Examples of macrolides are erythromycin and azithromycin. Chloramphenicol They bind to the 50S ribosomal subunit, preventing peptide bond formation and consequently blocking protein synthesis. The lincosamides, they bind to the 50S ribosomal subunit and prevent the continuation of protein synthesis, inhibiting a variety of gram-positive and gram-negative organisms. Examples include lincomycin and clindamycin. Oxazolindinones this class binds to the 50S ribosomal subunit and are thought to interfere with the initiation of protein synthesis. Examples include linezolid and tergizolid. Streptogramins They are of two types, dafopristine and quinupristine. Each interferes with a distinct step of protein synthesis. Inhibition of nucleic acid synthesis Enzymes that are required for nucleic acid synthesis are the targets of some antimicrobial drugs. These include the quinolones and fluoroquinolones. They inhibit one or more of a group of enzymes called topoisomerases, which maintains the supercoiling of closed circular DNA within the bacterial cell. One type of topoisomerase, called DNA gerase, breaks and rejoins strands to relieve the strain caused by the localized unwinding of DNA during replication and transcription. Inhibition of these enzymes prevent these essential cell processes. Derifamycins They block prokaryotic RNA polymerase from initiating transcription. Thus, it inhibits bacterial RNA synthesis. Inhibition of metabolic pathways The most useful are the folate inhibitors, which are sulfonamides and trimetoprene. These each inhibit different steps in the pathway that leads initially to the synthesis of folic acid and ultimately to the synthesis of a coenzyme required for nucleotide biosynthesis. Animal cells lack enzymes for folic acid synthesis, which is why folic acid is a dietary requirement. Sulfonamides Sulfonamides and related compounds, collectively referred to as sulfur drugs, are structurally similar to paraminobenzoic acid, a substrate in the pathway for folic acid biosynthesis. Because of this similarity, the enzyme that normally binds paraminobenzoic acid preferentially binds sulfur drugs, resulting in competitive inhibition. Human cells lack this enzyme, 
providing the basis for the selective toxicity of sulfanamide. Trimetoprim It inhibits the bacterial enzyme that catalyzes a metabolic step following the one inhibited by sulfanamide. Fortunately, the drug has little effect on the analogous enzyme in human cells. We've come to the end of this video. Before you leave, please do endeavor to hit the subscribe button and turn on your notifications so whenever I upload a video, you'll be the first to know about it.